Hello and welcome Hero Forge fans. As always, I am Dr. Faust of Dr. Faust Painting Clinic, and I'm here to bring you another painting tutorial for your Hero Forge miniatures. Last time we learned how to paint black, so obviously this time we're going to do the opposite. We're going to learn how to paint white. One thing you may notice is that our miniature this time is primed black. And the reason for that is, well, I like to do things the hard way, but also I want to give you an example of what is undercoating and also once again show you the power of layering. So without further ado, let's get to it. So to begin with, let's talk about primers and why you would use one color primer over another. Well, it's a few different reasons, uh, mainly the colors that you're going to paint and also your painting style. Uh, I've painted with black primer for years and years and years because the layering process that I teach starts from darkest to lightest, so it's naturally to start with a darker color. Uh, also, black can be very useful if you're painting a figure that's a majority of dark color, and also it tends to be uh, a little bit easier to work with if you're a, a fast painter and you want to paint quick, you know, and not worry too much about quality uh, because you can leave black in the recesses uh, without uh, the same issues that you would have if you had white in the recesses. It's not going to stand out as much. The second thing I have to mention is undercoating. What is that? Well, in the case of you're painting a miniature that is, let's say, mostly black, so you primed it in black, but there are a few areas that are painted, for example, red. Well, you're gonna have to undercoat those areas a few times to build up to a proper color because putting red over black is gonna end up being very dark. So you may have to go back underneath with a darker red or a white and then start applying the red. So in the case of our Priestess of Light here, we have to first undercoat because we're starting with a black primer and we want to work our way up to white. So we're going to put down a layer to start building up our future layers upon. And for that I'm using a mix of game colors Shadow Grey mixed with Glacier Blue. Our next layer is the same as the previous mixture, just with more of the Glacier Blue added. And we are completely covering the previous layer. This isn't the exact same as layering. We're not leaving a little bit in the recesses. That previous layer is just there, so it makes it easier to apply this layer. Now, we could have just started with this layer, uh, but we would have to apply more and more layers of it. So, essentially, it's a... It's the, it's the difference between applying one of the previous layer and like one of this layer or zero of the previous and three or four of this layer to cover all the black. Next comes straight glacier blue and we are leaving that previous layer just in the deepest recesses and applying this as a base coat. So we're up to our standard layering process now. Paint is very thin and we are slowly building it up until we achieve a nice smooth layer of glacier blue. Now one of the problems a lot of people have with white is uh, the problem it seems to go on chalky and builds up really thick. Well that's because they don't thin it enough and also they're not following this process. They try putting white straight over black, it doesn't cover and so they put on thicker and thicker gobs of paint and it starts to build up. So that's the other reason why we're doing the layering here. We slowly, very slowly build up to white through layers, successive layers so we get a nice, nice smooth layer of white in the end. Our second to the last shade layer is Glacier Blue mixed with white. And I did say that correctly, shade layer, because much like black, just the opposite, where we don't shade black, we actually don't highlight white because you can't get any lighter than white. So white is both our base coat and our highlight color. White is difficult to work with and you'll notice it's a little blotchy going down, but as we apply uh, successive layers on top of each other, it starts to smooth out. It's a very slow process, but if you want to paint white correctly, it does take time. Our final color for the base coat and the highlight is pure white. 
If we were to apply this just as a highlight, well then we would be painting a very light cool gray. So we want to spread this color out, get it in a large surface area so we're painting pure white. So what we just painted is a cool white. Remember that a cool color has a tint of blue to it. And a cool white is very good for representing a very clean white. So it works very good for our priestess here with nice clean robes. Uh, it also works for ethereal type uh, effects for like ghosts you can use it for. But there are other ways to paint white and we'll get up to that next. So now we're going to paint a warm white. I want to give you a good example of the difference between the two. Uh, as, once again, warm has a little bit of a brown tint to it. And warm white, uh, I tend to reserve for uh, a dirtier white, uh, more of a, a darker linen color. Something that would work really well be like a warrior uh, in the battlefield. Uh, he or she probably wouldn't have a very clean tabard, for example, on. So we would use a warm white there to show a little bit more dirt, a little bit more grime to it. Uh, just like before, we de do need to start with an undercoat because we started with black primer. And this time we're starting with Vallejo model color Iraqi sand. I should mention real quick that another benefit of starting with a black primer is you can leave a black line between different areas of the miniature and you don't have to paint it in later. So if I wanted to, I could leave a little line between the two different whites here. Uh, I'm not doing it in this case because using a black line between two different shades of white is just a bit too much contrast for my taste. Our next mixture for our warm white is an equal mix of pale sand and Iraqi sand. And just like before, the Iraqi sand is being, being completely covered up. Uh, we could, once again, leave it as a dark line between the two colors if you choose. Uh, I am not doing that in this case, but I am leaving a little bit of the Iraqi sand in that deep recessed area underneath her flowing cape because we, we do want a little bit more shadow there. And then our next layer, straight pale sand, uh, leaving that previous layer just in the deepest recesses. And as always, our paint is very thin. Uh, if you want to practice layering, working with white is going to be your greatest challenge, I think, uh, just because uh, it covers so slowly. Uh, you really do have to keep the layers thin and just slowly build them up. If you want to practice patience, definitely paint a lot of white. Our next layer is pale sand mixed with white. And just once again, repeating the process, working our way up towards the highlight and base coat areas. Remember, we are still technically working on shade colors here because our base coat is white. Next, pale sand with a little bit more of white added. I know this is getting repetitive, but that's the key to layering and to painting white. Uh, just lots of very thin layers. And then finally, we work our way up to pure white. And have to admit, I'm cheating a little bit here. Uh, as I was going through the process, I decided to go with a little bit more towards an off-white for uh, the other areas of the miniature because uh, it really contrasts well having that a, a little bit more yellow in it with the cool white. So that's why I added the previous step with the pale white and the, excuse me, the white and the pale sand. And our white here, uh, not quite a base coat. Um, it's a little bit more uh, heavier uh, towards the base coat than just a pure last highlighting step for sure. But I'm leaving a little bit more of the pale sand showing than it would it be if I was painting a pure warm white. Uh, we're going to leave some of that previous color showing through so it's a little bit more warm, has a little bit more brownish, a little, little bit of that yellow showing through. On to the skin tone, and I'm going to assume that a priestess is going to be inside praying in the temple all the time. So we're going to go for a fairly, well, fair skin tone. 
and for that we are using a 50-50 mix of rose brown mixed with beige red. After two thin coats of that, next is a coat of beige red mixed with basic skin tone. And since we're going for a fair skin tone, that previous color is left deep in the recesses. Uh, when it comes to painting male and female faces, there are differences uh, in how you paint them, uh, just because of bone structure. So we don't want any real sharp chiseled looks on the cheeks. We want to be fairly smooth. Up to our base coat now, uh, same mixture, this time a little bit more of the basic skin tone added. And our next highlight, straight basic skin tone. I hope you're following the process here. It's fairly simple if you're using, let's say, just three colors for your painting process. You have a, a dark version of the color you're painting, a medium version, and a light version. And you just start with the dark color, then you work in equal amounts of the medium, then you do a layer of the medium, and then equal parts of the medium and the light, and so on. So uh, it's a fairly simple process of highlighting. You could complicate it a lot by mixing in different uh, ratios, mix two colors in at a certain point or three colors as I've done before. But if you just want to paint basically, just get three colors, a dark, medium, light, and follow this process. It's very simple once you actually do it. And then for our final highlight, since we want a fairly pale skin tone, we're gonna add a little bit of white to the mix. And we're applying this final highlight to the uppermost areas of the face and the hands. So the uh, tip of the nose, uh, very top area of the cheek, chin, and the knuckle areas. And don't forget the ears. For the lips, we mix in some red uh, with our original beige red color. And when it comes to painting lips, uh, usually you just want to do the bottom lip. Don't bother with the upper lip unless your intention is to paint someone with lipstick on them. Uh, but after this, you can add a little spot of white for a highlight layer if you wish. Since we painted a very pale skin tone, I want to go back and add just a little bit of color to her cheeks so she doesn't look unhealthy. And for that, we are using a mix, a very thin mix of our original basic skin tone mixed with some magenta. Very, very thin, just glazed on the cheeks a little bit, just to give a little warmth there, a little more color to her face. All right, I will briefly cover painting eyes. For Hero Forge figures, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this because the eyes on their figures tend to be fairly accurate in scale, meaning they are teeny, teeny, tiny and really hard to paint, especially on camera. But uh, the general idea is you first want to darken in the eye area with a very dark brown. I used camel black brown. Admittedly, for this fair skin tone, I probably should have used a slightly lighter brown. Uh, but after that, fill in the eyeball area with an off-white. I used bone white. And then try to blacken in the pupils, once again using the camo black brown. Probably going to take you a few tries to get it right, especially on eyes this small. The other way to paint eyes is to blacken in the entire area, once again with camo black brown, and then put small drops of off-white in either corner, and then add more just to shrink down the size of the pupil. Uh, either way, you want to go back with either flesh color or the camo black brown around the eye to clean it up. You may find it easier also to paint the eyes on a miniature first, but uh, once again, the eyes on these figures are so small, you can get away with just putting a dark brown wash in the eye area, and it usually would be fine. Uh, in this particular figure, since she's looking up, I kind of had to do the eyes, and it's very difficult, to be honest.
time to paint the hair on our priestess and we're gonna go for a blonde hairdo and for that we are starting off with like a model color English uniform as our undercoat. I should mention that the area below the ponytail is also hair but uh, while I was painting I forgot I thought it was a secondary cloak so I had to go back and finish that up in the end uh, but I kind of skipped it at the moment. Next is golden brown and you can see the paint here is a little bit thicker uh, because we're painting a textured surface. We need more control over the paint. We're not painting this in uh, multiple very thin layers. So the paint is just very barely thin. So we have control over it and we can highlight all those little hair ridges, bumps and flowing locks. Our next highlight is yellow ochre. Just repeating the process, putting on another layer of highlights. By this time, hopefully you understand everything that's going on. You've been practicing all your painting, so I shouldn't need to explain this too much. And then our final highlight is yellow ochre mixed with white for those upper top highlights. Uh, when it comes to painting yellow hair, excuse me, blonde hair, uh, it actually has a little tint of green in it, uh, which is good starting off with the English uniform. Uh, one key, of course, is you don't actually paint with real pure yellow colors because blonde hair is not the same color as like a school bus, for example. But uh, you can follow us up also if you want a little bit darker color with a, a dark brown wash or something like that. And then finally, we just paint a few of the odds and ends on the miniature. The trim around the robes, I painted with sky blue, currently highlighting that with white. And that's kind of important here because I want to add some blue to the miniature to show how uh, pure white or cool white is. So it contrasts very well. well when it comes to picking colors, uh, it's helpful to think of things like that, how one color will affect another. And there is our priestess. And remember, we started with black primer here and we have very light colors that we use all the way up to pure white. And while if you're gonna paint something that's gonna be a majority of white, you wouldn't necessarily want to start with black. But uh, once again, I'm trying to do a demonstration purpose here, showing you what you can possibly do. Uh, there's a lot of people who think that if you prime with black, you end up with very dull colors. Well, that's not true if you're layering because we're not putting white over black. We put white over glacier blue, which we put over a mix of glacier blue and shadow gray, and that went over the black. Um, so it's, it's layer on top of layer, and you can end up with very bright colors. Now, if we were starting with a gray or a white primer, yes, we could have skipped a few steps, but uh, sometimes you can't do that. If you have a, a figure that's... Um, you know, half black and half white, or half black and half red, you, you may have to change how you primer and how you want to approach the project. So when it comes to applying primer to your miniature, think about uh, what you want your final results to be. Uh, I learned by painting black, which was a great practice for layering the way I do it from darkest to lightest, it seems natural. You can leave black in the recesses in case you miss something. You can leave it as a dark line between colors. So it has a lot of benefits. Uh, white, you don't have to apply as many layers. Uh, so if you're working especially lighter colors, it might work better for you. And also, if you want an in-between color, uh, gray also is an option. And, of course, there's a wide variety of different color primers, red, blues, and greens, but we won't get into that because we have to draw the line somewhere in these videos. But uh, hopefully you learned something, and as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time with another tutorial. Bye-bye. by following the same order every time. So clean yourself in alphabetical order. <laughs> <laughs>